Hello. In this interview today, I am speaking with my friends, Jennifer Thompson and Alyssa Mudd. We all met in Kiev. We were all teachers there. Alyssa was actually a counselor. However, since then, since we were all in Kiev, I've moved back to the United States. They were both in China. And then Jenny is still in China, but getting ready to move to Dubai. And this is Alyssa's second or third year in Vietnam. I can't remember. I'm losing track. But they are talking about why they love living overseas, the benefits of being a teacher, and they even tell how to go about the process, how to get a job overseas, and why they have no plans on coming back in the near future. And I will say that after talking with them, I was a little jealous. <laughs> I was like, I want to go back overseas. So... It's definitely a lifestyle, and if you are a teacher here in the States, but you know, you're thinking maybe, maybe this could be for me, then you need to watch this and listen to what Jenny and Alyssa have to say. And if you have any questions about the process or you know, anything at all about teaching overseas, living overseas, countries, anything of that nature, just let me know. I'm always here to answer questions. So thank you. Hi, Alyssa and Jenny. Thank you for being here today. Hi, Hi thanks yeah. for being here. So I wanted to talk with you too about your experiences living overseas and why you do it and the things that you've gotten from it and maybe some of your stories even. So who would like to start? Jenny? Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll start. <laughs> so. So uh, first, you said, let's talk about like why we moved overseas, correct? Mm -hmm. So why, why are you living overseas? Okay, well, I had been teaching in the U.S. Uh, in the public school setting in North Carolina for, well, I've been teaching overseas for nine years, and I, I was happy. I was really enjoying what I was doing, but... I was so exhausted because of all the demands of working in the public school system. <laughs> Even though I enjoyed it and I loved my kids and the parents, it was it was so much. And one of the teachers at the school had taught overseas with for 16 or 17 years. And I remember she started telling me about some of her adventures and what her teaching experiences were like overseas. And I thought it sounded too good to be true. <laughs> So she she invited my husband and I over uh, to speak with uh, herself and her husband one evening, and she had dinner, and so we just got to talk to them a little bit about what life was like living overseas, and um, they told us a good company to start out with was uh, Quality Schools International. Uh, that's the, the company that they had started out with when they first moved overseas, and so they said if this is something you're interested in, in the next couple of months, or in the next month or so, that's when you would need to apply. <laughs> so, so I didn't think that uh, my husband John would be interested in possibly moving overseas, but I thought, well, I'll just mention it to him. <laughs> so I did, and surprise, surprise, he was interested and liked the idea. <laughs> so, um, we ended up, we applied, and then they asked for an interview. We interviewed, and then we had gotten, in January, the year before we went overseas, we had gotten the placement. We were actually supposed to move to Yemen, uh, Sana'a, and that was right before the Arab Spring hit. So we were already committed to go there uh, right before that time period, and so um, our families were quite nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, then, as you, as you know, just a couple of weeks before we were headed to Sanaa, the, the company, someone from the company called us and said there were a couple of openings in Ukraine. Would we be interested in going there instead? And we did. <laughs> and then our families felt a bit better about it. <laughs> so that was my first experience overseas. I've now been overseas. This is our seventh year overseas. We've been in three different countries. Um, Ukraine, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and China, and we're moving to our fourth location in August. We'll be going to United Arab Emirates, um, Abu Dhabi. <laughs> so we thought, at first we thought, oh, maybe we'll go overseas for a year or two, but 
I don't know when we'll be headed back to the U.S. now. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> I miss it. <laughs> it's kind of addicting. <laughs> it's kind of addicting. So what is your story, Alyssa? How did you end up first going overseas? Um, mine is very similar. Um, we had taught for four years in Montana after graduating um, college, and we connected with uh, the landlord of the house that we were renting was moving overseas. Um, he was going to be the principal in an international school in Singapore. And before they moved and before we moved into their house, they were like, come over, uh, let's, you know, get to know you guys. And they showed us, um, like, the international school's book that uh, they publish that has, like, thousands of international schools in it with all of their statistics and all of their locations and how many students and all of this kind of stuff. And it was like a world opened up that I'd never even thought of before. Um, so that was, that kind of piqued our interest. And by the next um, fall, we were registered for a teaching conference or a teaching, um, what are they called? Uh, teaching fair. Yep, and we went to our first teaching fair, and um, there it was amazing. Like, the teachers that go to this fair, you know, you're like-minded people with adventurous spirits. You want to, um, you have a passion for kids, a passion for teaching, and you're just looking for something a little bit different. Um, so just being surrounded by those people at the teaching fair was life-changing and motivating and then you know you walk into this room with hundreds of schools that are you know looking for applicants and it's three days of intense uh, interviews and questioning and you're like you have to make decisions on the spot are you moving across the entire world to Colombia which my mom says she's never going to visit me if I move to Colombia but you know, uh, so it was really in, it was really fun and intense, and we ended up um, being hired to go to Puerto Rico. That was a baby step, um, a good kind of middle ground, still a U.S. territory, but not like Laurel, Montana. You know, um, so we were there for a couple of years, and then we moved to Kiev. That's when we. Um, got hired with Quality Schools International. We moved to one of their schools in Ukraine um, and then to China for five years, also with Quality Schools International, and now we're in Vietnam. This is our 10th year um, teaching overseas, and we have three babies. They've all been born in different countries, and the plan is to keep doing what we're doing. We love it and uh, um, always, like the biggest downside, right, is not um, being closer to family. Um, but we knew that from the very beginning and we've always said like if we're going to make this work and raise our kids overseas, we need to make the sacrifices to give them ties back to their family. So um, we put a lot of effort into Skyping weekly with family. Um, we go back every single Christmas. We go back every single summer. And it turns out that we end up spending more time with grandma and grandpa than the aunts and uncles that live just a couple states away. So it's, it's a weird thing. Um, but it's working for us so far, and we really love it. Yeah, and I think a lot of people don't realize that you can do this fairly easily with kids, because I was always told once I had my son, oh, you can't travel to another country. You're going to have to move back home. And I'm like, why? Right. <laughs> why? So, and you have two little ones too, Jennifer. What's your experience with your kids overseas? 
Um, so I have a 10 month old little boy and then a three year old boy. So, you know, life with little ones is always fun and sometimes exhausting, <laughs> but uh, it's really been so nice uh, having them in this international setting. We don't know what it's like to live in the U.S. with them because since we've had them, we've just been overseas. But um, I know it's just been such a great experience for them right, right now. Uh, that one interesting fact, uh, the, the boys have a nanny. They call it an IE here. Her name is Zong, and she was Alyssa's IE with her family for how many years, Alyssa? Yep, a couple of years. Yep. So she she's just amazing. So she's teaching, um, especially my older son Ben. She's teaching him Chinese. So he's learning Chinese and English, and it, it's such a great experience being in an international school where we have students from so many different countries that are coming together, learning, loving each other. You know, learning how to be a friend. Um, just like this week, for example, my son was able to go and do a really fun activity at the school's maker space, working with older kids from just so many different countries. It was just so neat to see him smiling and laughing and learning from um, others around him. So I think it's been a really great experience. And, and like I said, I think it's brought us closer together as a family unit. Uh, because sometimes, you know, there are moments where things can be challenging and um, so, you know, sometimes things like if there's a language barrier or, you know, sometimes things are just different than what we're used to or what we've experienced maybe before in the U.S. It's not bad. It's just different. And so um, I think it's just brought us closer together and we're able to you learn to be more patient and hopefully and more understanding. <laughs> um, so it's been it's been really good so far with the boys. And that's why we are. I don't know how long we're going to do this, but I think it's going to be for a while <laughs> because I think it will be a harder transition going back permanently to the U.S. at some point, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can attest to that. <laughs> I yeah. can attest to that. It's very, it's, I feel like it's much more difficult to live in the U.S. than it was overseas in many ways. Yep. But I want to hear some stories. Like, what is your most memorable experience living overseas, if you had to choose one? Alyssa? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> There's so many, right? <laughs> um, it's just really, it's really been a blessing to be able to... Um, show our kids so much of the world and so uh, easily. Um, like, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of weird, right? Like, you would think that living internationally um, would be a big sacrifice or a big change or really scary, but... Um, maybe it depends on where you live, but for example, right now, if it would be easy for me to forget that I'm actually living in Vietnam. Maybe that, I don't know if that's my 10 years speaking, or it's just so easy to kind of stay, if you want to, to stay in your bubble. Um, you go to school, you um, come home, you do normal things like cook dinner, give baths, read stories, go to bed, watch Netflix, like all of the same things that you would be doing in America. Um, so that brings me to a question. You have yeah. all those things overseas. You have Netflix. I get yeah. asked this all the time. Yes, yes, yes. You have Netflix. In China, you don't necessarily have Facebook, <laughs> right? But there's... <laughs> There's, you know, ways. Um, oh, it's it's way easier than you would think. And you, right. you given the, um, if it's your priority, you can feel as connected as you want to feel to um, the people back home. And 
The part that I've really enjoyed about raising kids overseas is I get to pick what they're influenced by. Um, my kids never see a commercial. Netflix doesn't have commercials. Um, my kids don't experience the same pressures, I feel, as at least I did when I went to school in America. Um, when it comes to even like holidays, like uh, Christmas or Easter, and if I don't want them to focus on the Easter Bunny, we don't because no one else here is even talking about the Easter Bunny. If I don't want them to be like, uh, Santa, 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 we don't have to be because it would, like, whatever I want them to be exposed to, I get to pick, um, which is, which is something that's really kind of special, so. Yeah, that's very hard to do here in the States. Right, right. It's all just thrown at you, yeah. Yeah. So do you Tell have a any... story, Jenny. Yes. Oh. Well, <laughs> I was just, just to add on just for a second to what Alyssa had said, and I've also found um, having taught in the public schools right before we moved overseas, I know for me it was interesting because a lot of things had been taken out, like all of, you know, all of that, like we didn't celebrate so many holidays in the classroom at school, you know, they weren't allowed to do that, um, and I found going overseas now that, you know, the kids will get to dress up for like book character day or things like that. It's, I don't know, they, they are able to do more things overseas like what I was able to experience when I was young that I think maybe some of those things um, are not seen in all of the public schools in the US. So I don't know, for me, I think that's kind of fun and nice. And, um, but also I agree with Alyssa what you said too. It's been uh, really nice because I feel like they don't have to grow up so soon. I don't know that I, I feel like maybe they're a little bit you're able to protect them maybe a little bit more so than we are I know that might sound kind of funny because also like I know Alyssa had said this before um, my family members most of them did not understand some of them still don't well a lot of them still don't understand why we're overseas why would you want to leave you know the safety of the US and even I, I was a bit scared as well because I, we'd only traveled overseas before we moved overseas, we'd only traveled to London and Paris, just a couple of places outside of the U.S. So I was a bit nervous myself, and now, having lived in a few different countries, I feel very safe being overseas, and I feel very safe having my children overseas, whereas, you know, it's, and it's even interesting because sometimes I'll hear other people from other countries that will say, you know, that they feel unsafe thinking about going to visit the United States. <laughs> so um, I don't know if you have <laughs> yes. experienced that as yes, well. Same. That's been really, especially being here, it's been really eye-opening. Wow, you're nervous or you're scared about going to visit? Because you know, I don't really feel nervous there either, but um, it, it's just interesting hearing and hearing why, hearing reasons why they feel a bit nervous or a bit scared about thinking about going to visit. And some of them don't want to because of that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So both yeah. of you feel very safe traveling around in different countries then. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, I think, uh, and when we moved to Abu Dhabi in, in August, um, also our, our families are – a little bit or at first when we talked about moving there they were a bit uncertain about moving uh, to a country in that part of the world but um, I, I was able to find a study online this last year it was voted it was somewhere in the top 10 for the safest countries in the world <laughs> so I said see mom see, there you go. <laughs> see and everyone has said that it's very safe <laughs> so <laughs> and once we're there they'll be fine <laughs> yep yep I think it takes actually doing it for some people or hearing and that's why I'm doing this too with you guys because I think hearing your stories it will open a lot of people's eyes because I get asked these same questions all the time so yeah. I actually for people that are thinking about possibly teaching overseas, 
what are the benefits of being a teacher in an international school? So there are, well, a list, I'll okay. let you share as well, but um, there are a lot of benefits, I think, to teaching overseas. Now, I've been doing this, this is our seventh year, so things might, might have changed some, somewhat in the U.S., and so you can probably attest to that, but um, for me, <laughs> Being a, a little bit perfectionist that I am, uh, I know when I was teaching in the U.S., I was working at school until, I don't know, 8 o'clock a lot of nights, and I knew I couldn't. I was starting to get a, a little burnt out because I knew I could not keep uh, continuing at that level and being able to, you know, to be well-rounded and, and to be a good wife and now a good mom, and um, so one thing for me being overseas, I still put 100% into work and working with kids and um, into lessons, making them fun and engaging, but I don't have to work until 8 o'clock <laughs> at night. Um, for me, you, you know, a lot of the schools, you'll have a paraprofessional that will work with you in the classroom if you're teaching um, up to third grade usually. You will have um, a, a lot of freedom. I found that I had a lot of freedom to teach and, and to, you know, look at my students' needs and base the curriculum upon their interests. And uh, I liked the curriculum a lot, it's mastery style learning, and, and that's been really wonderful as well. Um, testing. I was, I was teaching third, fourth, and fifth grades in the U.S., and there was so much stress on the testing. There is absolutely no stress whatsoever <laughs> uh, teaching internationally. Uh, the students take the end of grade tests, they perform well, but it's just another day and it's one piece uh, of evidence that we look at for mastery. It's not the piece. So um, also supplies. I spent so much of my money, my personal money, uh, purchasing supplies for the classroom because when you're a new teacher and you come in, you have nothing and you're expected to have this, you know, amazing, amazingly put together classroom, but you just, you know, if you're just out of college, where are you going to come up with the funds for that? So it can be difficult. Um, and overseas, you don't have to put any of your money towards the classroom supplies. They, uh, you're able to order things that you think you'll need for the classroom every year and for the most part, you get them the following year, including books, uh, anything you can think of that you would need. Um, any, all the materials, all, like markers, crayons, all that type of thing, so anytime you need them, they will give them. How much on average do you think you order about a dollar amount per year that you order? Now, I mean, there's a few things that I just like to have, so maybe $50, $100. Maybe. So not that much. I remember in Kia, the very first year when I walked into the classroom and there wasn't much there because they had a, there were four teachers rather than three, I ordered $13,000 worth of stuff. I got it all. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's that would never happen wow. in the States. <laughs> My classroom was stocked. <laughs> <laughs> I may not have gotten it all, but I got a large percentage. And wow. nobody, questioned me. nobody questioned me at all. I was like, okay. Sweet. And I should have ordered more. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm the only one that, and normally it wasn't like that. It was just that one year. <laughs> no, no, you're right. Because in Kiev, I started the elementary counseling program and there was nothing before me and it was like you do the research you tell me what you need you know mm -hmm. and we'll get it for you and it was just that easy like you're the professional you decide what's gonna what you want to work with and we'll support you like, wow it's amazing so can you, you know, give any oh sorry I'm glad go ahead no I I'm sorry, I was going to say just this year, I'm working in the library, uh, some librarian right now, but um, we were or able to order books and just order as many books as you want. There was no limit. Just order what you need for the library and they signed off <laughs> and it was amazing. <laughs> that would never happen in the States. Never. <laughs> I know, and it's great for the kids, and so I'm very, I'm very thankful uh, that our, our kids are going to have opportunity to grow up in the international school setting. That's awesome. 
Do you have anything to add to that, Alyssa? Uh, my perspective is um, a little bit different. I've never actually, um, at least most of my time overseas has been school counseling, um, not actually majority in the classroom. Um, and from a school counseling perspective, it's equally as different as Jenny was mentioning. Um, as a school counselor in America, you spend most of your time on paperwork and IEPs and um, kind of covering your tracks. Um, a lot of testing, a lot of scheduling, a lot of like administrative work. Um, that I, I don't know, do 0% of. Um, the part that I love about counseling is just the social emotional connections that I um, have with students. And that is 95% of what I get to spend my day on. Um, and the students are different. I mean, all students are the same, right? Like they go have similar struggles, but um, the level of respect maybe, or maybe it's their background that they're coming from. In the international schools, a lot of the families are business families or embassy families. Um, oftentimes they value education and that kind of trickles down to their kids as well. Um, so it's just, it's a pleasant atmosphere and um, it makes a big difference in the teachers and the administration and just the feel of the school is a lot different than what I experienced when I was teaching in America. Um, I mean, kids are kids everywhere, but international teaching is like the secret to teaching. I don't know. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have two more. I have two questions for you, Jen Jenny. Okay. So how many plan periods do you get a day? Like if you're in the regular classroom. Okay, so anywhere from two to three usually every day, two to three, but those are like 45 minute periods, which you do, you do not get that in, in the U.S. Uh, much more planning time, which has been so nice. And I, this was a big one I forgot to mention, uh, for the most part, smaller class sizes too. I've had one year I had a class of 10 students. I think that was the smallest amount that I personally have had. The largest class that I had was 20. So I mean, much less than what I had in the U.S. And uh, again, with the paraprofessional too, there's two of you to help all the students. Um, and to kind of piggy piggyback off something that Alyssa had said with the parents, well, one, I, I don't have nearly as many behavior issues um, as what I experienced in the U.S. And, um, and then the parents are involved. They want to know if you reach out to the parents and let you know, let them know your concerns. They take those concerns. They want to work with you for the most part. I mean, it, it is a partnership. They want to be kept aware, and they're um, you're working together to to help the students succeed, which is what you want. Um, the only thing that one big difference I think when I taught in the public schools in the U.S. is um, I think that the students there really did need me. I do think that overseas they do as well, but I, I do feel like in the public schools, some, for some of them, you know, I was the bright moment, or I guess school was the, the bright moment of their or the bright time of their day. And so on one hand, I do feel like sometimes maybe with some students, I made more of a difference. I mean, they love us overseas and, you know, they learn so much from, from us, but that's one thing I found to be a little bit different. Yeah, they just make it very difficult for you in the States to, right. to be there, right. I feel well, like. That's true. No, that's true. That's, that's true. Yeah, but you're totally right about that as well. The other question I had for you is, do you write lesson plans? <laughs> I, you I, might. I, I, 
I do. No, I'm not lying. <laughs> I, do, I, I do have a lesson plan book, and I, I always like to have it written out, but I don't have to. It's not a full, huge lesson plan for every subject. So I do jot down, okay, what am I doing in every subject for every day? But that's just because I want to. It's not that anyone is saying, you must do this or you have to show me what you're working on. So there's not any of that. I know at one school I worked at in the U.S., I had to actually copy, you know, make copies of the lesson plans and keep them on file so that they could see them at all times or, you know, um, email them to the principal or director. And you don't have to do any of that. So it's, it's really nice. I think they, they trust you. They know that you're professionals. Um, and so... As long, you know, they'll come in at first, especially your first years, adjusting to teaching internationally, but um, I think they trust you, and, and, and they know that um, you have the student's interest at heart, so. Yeah, all of these of reasons, all of these reasons are why I quit here. <laughs> it was great to field overseas. <laughs> so right, I can imagine it's hard to go yeah. back. I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I couldn't. I made it for two years, and I had I was not in the regular classroom, so I actually had a very good job. But even then, just I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. But for anybody that wants to do it, what is the process? How do you how do you get a job teaching at an international school? You need a teaching certificate. Um, a lot of we, I, we get a lot of questions about this, and people think that they um, can come with maybe like a TEFL uh, certificate or ESL, you know, some kind of certificate program that you just do for a couple months. Um, you can, for example, come to Vietnam, and you'll end up in an English tutoring center. Um, the pay is not sustainable. Like if you're a backpacker and you're 22 years old, that might be perfect. But if you're looking for a career, um, you need a teaching license. Um, most schools are going to encourage you to have a couple years teaching experience. Um, and then many people's first step is to apply with a agency, um, a teacher recruiting agency, I guess. There's many, um, ISS is one, UNI, University of Northern Iowa has a teaching recruiting portion. Search Associates um, is another well-known one. Jenny, what are Tie some online. others? Tie online. Tie Sometimes online. Sometimes you can just go directly with the school, too. Like, I got hired with QSI just with an interview through, through them. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think QSI is um, maybe not the norm when it comes to that. Um, QSI has their own recruiters, right, that um, make it really kind of easy to go just jump right in without going to a, a teacher recruiting fair. Um, but that's, yeah, sometimes you can just end up contacting the school. We, we tried that when we were transitioning um, some years and didn't really have much luck getting those administrators to answer our emails. And now my husband is um, the director here in Vietnam. No wonder because it's like a constant flow of people all year long wanting to know if you're, you know, looking for teachers and it's, it's hard to kind of weed through that. Um, so I would recommend if you're just starting out, um, going through a recruiting agency and possibly going to a teaching fair because it's those connections that, uh, that could pay off. And you'll find that um, 
once you're abroad for a couple of years, like, it's a small world. Um, don't burn any bridges because you never know when it's going to come back around. Like, you'll end up on the other side of the world working with coworkers that you used to work with, and it's just like an amazing small world, so... It is a small world. You're in Vietnam. I'm in the States. You're in China. We all used to work in Kiev together. Right, right. <laughs> we worked with Alyssa two times. So we were with them in Ukraine and in China. So I yep. didn't expect that. I was very yep. happy about it. <laughs> so, and I, I think just for our experience, um, I, I would um, recommend Search Associates because we had gotten our things on there and we weren't actually applying and um, they actually contacted my husband. So we didn't actually like go on and apply to any, any schools, but they contacted us. So I think that's a, it's a little bit, it's one of the pricier ones, I think, but um, I don't know, there might be a lot of schools that uh, would use uh, their recruiting service. So um, and there are a lot of recruiting fairs in different cities around the U.S. Uh, Alyssa, is it October, November, December, January, like between that time period, right? Yeah, you Jessica need to King. pretty much have your decision made um, by October is when a lot of the deadlines start happening to be a part of those recruiting agencies. And then... Um, so then October, November, you're going to be, you know, schools are going to be contacting you or you'll be contacting schools or you'll be researching where you want to go. Um, it's going to be like a roller coaster of emotion and excitement and be like, I'm headed to Bosnia. Oh, wait, like, nope, uh, we're going here. And so what do you say to those people that say, I want to go to Germany or France or Spain? What do you say to those people? That's where I'm going, they say. No, um, for us, one, another reason, I forgot to mention this, that we decided to go overseas is we have a lot of school loans <laughs> that we wanted to work on paying them off. And, and actually, my husband has been in school forever. So we're continuing to pay off degrees for him. <laughs> Um, no, I'm just teasing, but, um, so for us, it was, we want to save money and those are great places to go to. Not that you can't, but maybe you're not going to save as much money. So it might be if, if that's not something that you're concerned about, then, then great. You could look at those schools or, um, maybe go to some place where you might save some money and then you might be able to go to some of those locations. It's, I guess it's kind of up to you. Um, and also a big reason that all of us love doing this as well as the travel because you have many breaks, fall break, winter break, spring break, plus other long weekends and you get to see the world, which is pretty amazing. I would say my advice to those people who want to end up teaching in Paris is uh, <laughs> um, don't box yourself in to something um, that you that you have planned for yourself because you're you're missing out on like the real the real point of it and the real adventure and never in my wildest dreams I I had to Google Ukraine okay like <laughs> the Ukraine or like I I don't even know where it is. Um, when we got offered the position, um, and to ever think that I would live in China nor have a baby in mainland China, like it's, it's just don't don't limit yourself, right? Um, it's it's an amazing adventure, and it is what you make of it. And if you only have one continent that you um, see yourself in. Um, your chances of, of getting there are a lot slimmer, um, especially if it's your first step into the international teaching world. Um, those high desired places um, are really uh, difficult to get into 
maybe you need 10 years international baccalaureate experience. You need a huge list of, um, it's just, it's just a lot more intense. Um, and I don't know, you might just be missing out on the gym that Kazakhstan is, who knows? <laughs> so thank you so much for doing this today. You guys are amazing. And I think there's a ton of information in here for people that maybe even weren't even thinking about this before that it's opened their eyes and now it's maybe a possibility. So that's amazing. Thank and if I can leave everyone with one final thought, um, one thing that I've also found since we've been overseas is that teaching internationally, all these teachers and amazing people like uh, school communities and even outside the school community, they become your other family. You really, it, you, you grow so close with the people here because um, we're, it's in the U.S. It was different because you know you see people during the day at work, but they're not a part of your of your family's life. It's not. It I don't know. It just didn't. I didn't feel as um, as close or as unified um, in the school settings that I was at in the U.S. But overseas, it's like you're so close with everyone. You're seeing them during the day. You're hanging out with them on the weekends. You're you know going to church with them, worshiping. I mean, there's so many. They're just, they become your family. So I, and they will be lifelong friends, right, ladies? <laughs> yeah. Right. right. <laughs> I very exactly. much agree with that. Exactly. Very Thank much. You. Okay, guys, have a great day. Thanks, Thank Jessica. You. So good to see you. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. You guys yeah, are amazing. that was fun. I think that <laughs> you guys, like, I mean, you're going to, like, inspire people. There's going to be, like, a whole, like, <laughs> trove of people, like, <laughs> trying to go overseas. <laughs> you're making me miss fun. it. <laughs> oh, you never know. You never know. You might end up back here. It'll be a little while. I've got 13 years, so. <laughs> 13 years. Koya will be 18 in 13 years. So All right. I'm here, I'm here for the long term, but that's okay. Right. So, but you guys are yeah, awesome. I'm sure it won't fly by. Not that you wanted it to, but. <laughs> Say that again? I said, I'm sure it will fly by. Not that you want it to, but. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's pros and cons to both, right? Like, it's just a different experience. Yeah, it's really what it amounts to. But, totally. It is, yeah. Well, it's, there's no, like. There's no right way, like, there's no perfect way to do it, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It just matters that, you know, you guys are, you're there for him, and, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, well I'm I can't here. believe six. That's so crazy. Or almost six. That's so crazy. Yeah, well, Ben is three, and... I, Kinsley. Not, Kinsley, that's right. And she's seven Kinsley's now? Seven. Yes. I saw this. I see her pictures and I'm like, she looks like you. Do you think so? I think everyone says all three of my kids look like John, but I got like, like nothing. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> it's the blonde hair. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I and, know. Uh, little Quinn. He's so cute. I, oh. I wish I could get to know his personality, but oh, he just no. looks yeah, he's a, he's, it's fun. We're, like, you know, we're finally, like, I just need to get through that first year. Like, I am not a ugh, baby person or something. <laughs> I don't know, it's just hard. It's just hard. But now are you, we're like. Are you working too? No, 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 no. <laughs> but you have three kids though. I mean. And I, you're that's, not working, but you are. Like, you're doing a lot of extra work. stuff. <laughs> Jessica, that's the other thing that I, the reason I'm never going back to America, and maybe I can only say this to you. I feel bad saying this to you. You, Jessica, Jenny, I, you kind of understand it. But I could never do what you're doing, Jessica. Like, a, a full-time mother and working and cooking wow. dinner and like it's I've, I've got him half the time I mean it's 
not any better, but yeah. I, I don't know how I would be a mom in America and, uh, yeah, it's tough. It's yeah. tough. So no, don't, don't at all think that I have it together because the only reason is it because I have a nanny. So like, I remember that. I remember yeah, yeah. those days. <laughs> no, 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 no. I am not some superhero. <laughs> but you know what? We all have our things. And I don't know, like living overseas, it's easy, but it's hard. Like those sort of things are what makes it, make it doable too. Right. So right. it's not that you have it any easier than anybody else either. I mean, you're, it's just what it is. Right. I do think I am thankful though for having the help because I feel like I'm while working full time that I'm able to spend more time with the kids than if I was having to on the weekends clean everything and do all the laundry and do all the grocery shopping and and do all the yard work. I mean, I can't even imagine how do you ever do anything else besides work. <laughs> I got a stack of laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I miss the days of having a housekeeper do my laundry. Yeah. yeah. I took care yeah. of my kid. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so the truth. But I have more conveniences than you have maybe. I don't know. <laughs> can you can you just yeah. go to like the store and buy maple syrup? Because there is no maple syrup in all of Vietnam. All of Hanoi, totally out of maple syrup. My kids. They don't know what to have for breakfast because they can't have pancakes or French toast or like, <laughs> sorry guys, I don't know, yogurt again. They're so addicted to maple syrup, but so I think I'm packing a suitcase of maple syrup over the summer. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to let you guys so. go. I've got to be somewhere, but thank Hi. you so much. I will... I'm not for sure exactly when this will go on iTunes, but I will let you know. It'll probably be in the next two to three weeks. I think I'm going to push you guys up because I think this is probably one of the better ones I've done. So Cool. So. It was so fun, Jessica. We yeah. loved it. Thank you so much. And Thanks are you guys, me. you can tell me yes or no. It makes no difference to me. But are you okay if I put it on YouTube or no? It's okay with me. Like this video. Okay. No. Yep. And you can tell me, no, it doesn't make any difference, but. That's okay. Did I like pick my nose? or the way? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one that looks like a mess, honestly. Like, <laughs> like I feel like maybe I should like brush my hair this morning. It looks like I didn't brush my hair. I did, but. <laughs> <laughs> right before, like when I was putting Eli down, right before I was getting on with you guys, like he grabbed my hair and pulled it around. I was like, oh. Great. <laughs> you always look beautiful. Grabbing my hand. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's all good to chat with you ladies. Yeah. Thanks, girls. This was fun. Yeah. Have a good night, guys. All right. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. So if you watched this video and you really enjoyed what you saw, you think that maybe international teaching could be a good fit for you or you're simply just more interested, feel free to click on the link below this video and sign up for a free session with me. What I'm doing now is I am working with women to find their purpose, find their passion, what they really want to do, and then creating a career or a business from that. So maybe this isn't what you're doing at all, but you're looking to create something from what you love to do. I also do that as well. So feel free to schedule a free consultation, a free session with me, and I would love to help you get some clarity around what you're seeking, about what you're wanting, and then maybe look at some possibilities for how to get there. Um, I've been working a lot with women that are you know, they are working on creating a business or a nonprofit, and I love being a part of the process because, you know, these people are going to help many other people. So it's, it's a cycle. So this is what I'm doing, and if you're not in that spot yet, that's fine too, not a big deal. I hope that this video has helped you to see what it's like to be an international teacher and you know, maybe you're one of those people that will find yourself living in one of those countries in the near future. So as always, you can 
use my email to get a hold of me. It's below, as well as my calendar. It's also listed below. Have a great day.